DD is a file copying and conversion tool that originated on the Unix operating system back in the 1970s, so it has some history. All objects on Unix and Linux are considered to be files, including file system and media storage devices. So when you image a device on a Unix and Linux system, you are basically just copying a file. DD has many input and output and conversion options for translating data from one format to another. For making exact copies of storage media for digital forensics purposes, we won't need to use most of these options. This makes DD a rather simple tool to use. DD is not a forensics-grade imaging tool because it lacks many of the features needed in digital forensics. However, DD has inspired the creation of many disk imaging tools and is the code base for some of them. And DD itself is considered to be forensically sound. By the way, the name DD doesn't mean anything specific. People have speculated DD as an acronym for a name like Disk Dump or Data Duplicator. Delete Data and Disk Destroyer have also been suggested, given DD's ability to overwrite information without fair warning. That being said, before we go on, I must warn you that this demo is destructive to the contents of digital storage media. DD gives no warning about possible incorrect parameters or gives you a second chance to check your source and target. If you accidentally copy an image to the incorrect target device, you can unintentionally and likely irreparably destroy data that you wished preserved. For this reason alone, I advise always using a hardware write blocker on your source media as a failsafe, even in a non-forensic situation, in case you were to make this mistake. A single protocol that emphasizes maximum safety for handling all disk imaging scenarios is best. In this demo, we will see how DD is used to copy a storage device to an image file, copy an image file to a storage device, copy a storage device to another storage device, split an image file into smaller files, adjust buffer sizes to speed up the copying operation, and what to do if disk read errors occur. Using DD is basically like using the copy command in MS-DOS, Linux, and Unix. You specify what you want to copy, where you want to copy it to, and some options to control the copy operation. Let's assume you have a storage device attached to dev SDC and you want to create a single image file of the entire device. You could use DD with the following command line to do so. This command copies the entire contents of the storage device at dev SDC to the file item-001.img, effectively acquiring an image of the entire device. The IF argument specifies the input file or device, and the OF argument specifies the output file or device. There is no progress indicator of the imaging process displayed. After the copy completes, the results of the operation is displayed. My Kali Linux system took 10 seconds to acquire a 100 megabyte image from a USB flash drive and write it to a file. If you want to compress an image as it is acquired, try the following command line. The gzip compression reduces a 100 megabyte image file to only 100 kilobytes in size. Not bad. If you don't specify the OF parameter, the output is sent to the standard output. This is useful for piping the copy data to another command, such as gzip for compressing or split for storing the image in several smaller files. This command splits the output of DD into 25 megabyte files and appends an incrementing three-digit number as a suffix to indicate the order of each file. Note that you must append a period onto the end of the file name if you want the index to appear as a file extension. You can reassemble the multiple parts back into a single file by streaming them as input to DD. So what if you don't want to copy an entire disk? In that case, you can specify the number of blocks to copy and the size of each block. The BS option is the size of the block of data to read, and the count option is the number of blocks to read. This command copies the first 512 bytes of dev SDA to the file mbr.img, effectively acquiring the master boot record of Kali's hard drive and saving it to a file. We can have a look at the contents of the file using the hex dump command. We can also determine what kind of information is in the file using the file command. Note that if we run the file command on the hard drive device, we would see the same information. The file command shows us that both files contain an x86 boot sector with a partition table, but no indication that there is any other information in either file. 
If we wanted to burn an image, we just collected to another attached device, we would just specify the input image file and output storage device. This DD command will copy the image file to whatever device is attached to dev sdb. Keep in mind that DD will not warn if the output device is mounted, in use, or is large enough to contain the entire disk image being burned to it. DD is very dumb and simple in that way. Block size is an important option in determining how large of an input and output buffer to use for copying data. Here we are acquiring an image from one device and writing it to another, effectively cloning the device, and we specify the size of the read and write buffer to be 1 million bytes each. Generally, the larger the block size, the faster the reading operation, but buffer sizes over a few megabytes can actually hurt performance. Also, consider that if a read error occurs, the entire buffer of information is lost. The default read and write buffer size is 512 bytes, which is safe but slow. DD will stop acquiring an image if it encounters a disk error on the storage device it is reading. In this case, to prevent DD from stopping, use the No Error Convert option. No error specifies that DD is not to stop reading if a bad sector or other disk error is encountered and attempt to write the data that was read, which might still be valuable to a forensic investigation. Adding the sync option causes DD to null fill the input buffer before the data is read. Using both no error and sync, if there is a read error, the input buffer will be written with null padding after the error and DD will continue. One last option I want to share with you is fsync. Using fsync causes DD to flush its write buffer to disk before exiting. This is very important for ensuring that no data being copied remains in memory and not written to the output after DD has exited. In this demo we saw how DD can be used to acquire the contents of a block device to a raw image file, burn a raw image file to a block device, splitting and reassembling raw image files, how to compress raw image files, displaying media partitioning and formatting information in a raw image, how to adjust the buffer sizes to speed up the imaging operation of DD, and some options for handling media read errors as they occur.